Hi, I'm Jen Rogers at NASDAQ Market Site, and this is Breakthrough Economy. Today, we're looking at a company that is using fusion technology to solve today's problems in medicine, manufacturing, energy, and beyond. I'm joined by Greg Pfeiffer, founder and CEO of Shine Technologies. Greg, it is so exciting to have you here today. I want to start by taking a look at Shine's mission, which is to generate fusion power to deliver clean, abundant energy that could transform life on Earth. I mean, wow, setting high goals. Uh, tell me how you're going to achieve this. Absolutely. Long term, uh, we see uh, nuclear fusion as the way that advanced societies produce energy. And, and the reason we see it that way is um, it'll provide essentially unlimited access to energy. Uh, so scalability that we've never seen before um, where, where we have scarcity today. Uh, and energy is key to solving so many problems that, that, you know, I think it's a really noble and important mission. And I think we're on the cusp of being able to access fusion energy as a society. Uh, today, our our plan is to go about it um, a bit like you know you'd normally see businesses scale. So we are looking at ways we can apply nuclear fusion that add value to the world today, that allow us to essentially get better at it and practice over time and scale it over time. Our approach is centered on reducing the cost of fusion and therefore gaining access to larger and larger social and market needs. So we're using fusion today to provide real value for industrial imaging, for production of medical isotopes, but certainly scaling toward that long-term mission of producing clean, abundant fusion energy that should, should transform, uh, should, should give humans a new tool uh, to solve some of the major problems we're facing in society today. Can you take us through some of the work that um, Shine Technologies is doing to um, as you say, you know, it's not just about you know, the, the, the future far in advance, but the present right now with just some examples. Because I think some people think, oh, fusion, that's just something I've seen in a movie, right? Like, so what are you doing right now that is allowing you to have this strategy that seems different than what other competitors might be doing? Well, fusion is really exciting and has a huge promise for humans. It's a really, really hard problem and in some ways an almost intractable problem. When you look at the amount of investment it's probably going to take and the amount of time it's probably going to take to get the technology to the point where it can benefit global population. Um, we view that as a, a multi-decadal time frame, and we view that as requiring tens, if not hundreds of billions of dollars of reinvestment uh, to achieve economies of scale that will make it cost competitive uh, with other forms of energy generation. So instead, we've looked at um, how can we get paid the most per fusion reaction? Uh, and it turns out you don't get paid the most for the energy produced from fusion. You can get paid a lot more per fusion reaction for this little particle that's produced um, called the neutron. Uh, and so we've said we can actually do fusion in a way that we're providing meaningful value for society uh, and, uh, you know, essentially establishing a return on investment for our investors uh, by um, selling that neutron rather than selling the energy. We can access those those markets a lot sooner. Uh, and so by doing that for the purpose of industrial imaging, for example, we're getting paid about a million times more per reaction than you would get paid for producing and selling energy. Uh, so that allows us to commercialize fusion today in a really valuable way for the world, but it also gives us a lot of practice with the sorts of things we need to do to scale fusion uh, to the point of uh, producing energy, such that we can reduce the cost of fusion over time. You've laid out the strategy. Are you doing this in a way that's different than your competitors? And do you think that it, because of that, that it's more scalable? I'd love to know like how you think it will be able to scale with this strategy. When we look at our competitors and, and really love what they're doing, frankly, as a general idea, they're, they're working on the physics of fusion. So trying to make fusion energy net energy positive um, is, is, I think, a goal that all of them are striving for. But that's really just a physics goal. Um, like, can it actually produce more energy than you put in? But we've always been focused more on the economics of fusion. And I think that's how we really differ. Our cue, if you will, is dollars out versus dollars in instead of energy out versus energy in. And so that's the metric by which we've built our business. And, and to actually create a business that can deliver dollars out, we need a process that can be industrialized, um, a process that can actually work all the time and make our customers very happy with what we're providing versus their alternatives. Uh, and so, our approach has been very deliberately focused on commercialization of fusion that we can provide economic value today 
um, with the belief that providing economic value today will make us better at it. When you look out at the landscape, what are the big challenges ahead for fusion energy? So fusion-based um, systems, even if we can get to scientific um, scientific gain that's relevant for energy generation, which we haven't done yet. I think that's actually the biggest obstacle is demonstrating that the science works uh, and can generate enough gain to produce more energy out than, than is, is put in. When we get there, I think that's meaningful, but then now you know what you have to build and, and it's then that the commercialization challenges begin. And when you look at any fusion-based system I've ever seen, the complexity versus conventional ways of producing electricity is much, much higher. Uh, and, and so driving the cost of those systems down versus photovoltaic, versus wind, uh, even versus fission, is gonna take a tremendous amount of investment and learning uh, and, and just supply chains, economies of scale, simplification, how can we do this more easily? Because we can't have you know, 100 PhDs um, on every fusion reactor studying diagnostic instruments trying to figure out how to do the next five minute burn. Uh, and so that's, to me, a multi-decadal problem um, that, that'll take to actually commercialize fusion as an energy source. I was going to ask you where you hope to see the industry in the next next decade, but you use the word multi-decadal yeah. <laughs> problem. So I guess that begs the question about the, the timeline of this industry. Um, what should people be expecting and thinking about? Yeah, so I think in the next decade, it's possible that we'll see scientific gain that's relevant for um, energy generation. And so that's the first step. So, so at that point, we now know what we have to build, I guess is one way to think about it. Um, and, and only then can you start to build pilot systems that might actually be relevant for uh, scaling into energy, right? How do, how do we build a cost-effective system that's very different than building a system in the lab? Uh, and so that's kind of how I think about it as multi-decadal. I think even with a lot of investment, um, hopefully we discover that. Now, I do think there is potential for breakthrough, um, which is really exciting. And the word breakthrough is used all the time in fusion and completely unnecessarily most of the time. Um, but there is an opportunity, I think, as we get to relevant gain for scientific breakthrough that actually makes fusion much easier to access. And that's something I'm really excited about. It, if, if we achieved a breakthrough like that, it could greatly reduce the time scales needed to commercialize fusion energy. I think that's what a lot of investors are betting on. Greg, it was so great to get a chance to talk with you and hear what you're doing and also your thoughts on the industry at large. Thanks a lot. Yep, you bet, thank you. I'm Jen Rogers.